Now, I want to get done with the opening remarks because I want to move right to what you see here. It's like, what is this, right? So the first team that's coming up is going to talk to us about a subway smart system. It's a subway smart system. And we have four of those team members coming right on up. Gentlemen, you guys can come right up to the stage. Please give them a round of applause. Now I'll have you hold a mic in the middle there. And great, you have a mic there. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you guys. Quickly introduce yourself and your school uh, that you're representing, and then go right into your presentation and share with the audience your Subway Smart system. We're all from Horace Mann, and I'm James Savaldelli. I'm Hugh Savaldelli, James's identical twin. I'm Jeffrey Wiener. James Heyman. Subway smart systems will have a phenomenal positive impact on the environment. Incredible. There has never before been an efficient way to capture the wind in urban cities and convert that wind into electricity. Subway smart system presents an opportunity to do this. Conventional wind power generates power very far away from where the power is actually needed. This means that the power companies have to lay large cables to get that power to the urban cities. However, Subway Smart Systems generates power locally right where it is needed, which results in no transmission loss. Subway Smart Systems could not only power the lights and the turnstiles within the subway infrastructure, it could also possibly help power the train itself. It couldn't power the train by itself, but it could certainly help reduce the electrical load that conventional power generators have to use in order to power the subway. subway the subway in New York by itself in one year will use up the same amount of power, electrical power, that the entire city of Buffalo will use in one year. Also, normal conventional wind power generates most of its power at night. This is because wind speeds are far, far higher in the night. However, when the power is needed is certainly in the day when we're using our lights and our appliances. Also, wind power is uh, generated much more in the winter because wind speeds are higher in the winter. However, due to ACs, wind power and electricity are needed much more in the summer. This results, of course, in storage loss because you have to store all of this electricity for a long time. So subway smart systems, because it powers electricity during the day when the subways are moving, when it is needed, and it also will power uh, appliances all year round, which means that there is no storage loss and no transmission loss. Because this is Earth Day, we should also probably remember all the animals that are hurt by conventional wind power. 20, on an average, 20,000 birds per year die when they hit the rotor blades of an air turbine. So that's all for how it will uh, help the world. I just want to thank Toshiba and um, everybody else for putting this together and Earth Day New York. Thank you very much. Um, now. I'm now going to pass it over to my brother, Hugh Savaldelli, to explain the first half of how this idea will work. Thank you, James. Um, I'll be presenting the first component of our project, the primary method of generating electricity from the subway. Our idea, the first component, is the ram air turbine. Ram air turbines are used commonly today in airplanes for emergency electrical power. If a plane loses electricity, it will deploy a ram air turbine which is attached to a rod. The wind from the outside of the plane spins the rotors, which turns a generator which generates electricity. Our idea, and we have a mock-up here today, this, is a modified ram air turbine. Uh, our idea will be mount mounted on the cross ties of the subway, so the train will actually pass overhead and spin the rotors that are inside of the ram air turbine. And actually, I have a mock-up which actually works, though this is being powered by a battery. It still uses, it still would show what it looks like when the wind goes through the ram air turbine. So as you can see, the, I mean, it's being powered by a 9-volt battery, but it, the, uh, the blades are spinning, 
and that would be now generating electricity, which would be sent in wires to power local appliances, like, as James said, it could power the lights, it could power the turnstiles. And our outlook, 20 years into the future, it will actually be able to be smaller, more efficient, and also be able to be attached to the multiple of that, multiple ram or turbines will be able to be attached to the cross ties. Um, we have microprocessor controls, which will vary the pitch of, pitch of the blades in order to more efficiently tap the strong winds of the subway and also uh, harness the light drafts of air that run through the tunnel consistently all day. Um, also, many people don't know this. The subway is actually underneath the subway. You, it can actually flood. The water that's underneath the subway could hurt the ram air turbine. The ram air turbine will have a piston-like cone in the front of it that when, it, when the water sensors mounted on the outside sense water, it will seal off the ram air turbine, stopping the production of uh, electricity, but saving the ram air turbine and making it watertight. And now I'm going to be passing it over to Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. As part of our research, we visited subway stations and rode on trains to experience the winds firsthand. We saw that there was a lot of wind at the sides of the trains. We also saw that the gap between the train and the walls of the tunnels was often very narrow. We therefore needed something that was compact, unobtrusive, and could cover all the wall area in order to capture the most wind power. The wind at the walls was very turbulent, so our device would have to make use of breezes from all directions, as well as catch light consistent tunnel breezes. We devised the futuristic smart grass to do that. The futuristic piezoelectric smart grass looks like grass-like blades to catch the air currents. The blades are attached to small piezoelectric crystals, which is this white rectangle, and when the blades are flexed by the wind's pressure, that will generate electricity. And here's an actual working model. If you bend this back and forth, then it will generate electricity. And the blades are short and compact and can carpet the tunnel walls. They can be oriented to catch the wind from all different directions, and they have no moving mechanical parts to wear out. We made a working model of the piezoelectric smart grass to demonstrate its feasibility. Our piezoelectric smart grass model uses piezoelectric transducers with the green blades of grass attached. The wires lead to an electric circuit that adds the currents together. When the wind moves the smart grass, it generates electricity which shows up on the voltmeter. This is a prototype and more research is needed to increase the power output of this system. Next, James Heyman will better illustrate how this works and summarize. Hello. Um to finish up and summarize our project, I would like to explain in greater detail how the subway smart system works. First for the smart rail system. It captures the wind in the tunnels and uses a basic generating system to work. If installed, it would have many features such as the internal blades which would again be microprocessor controlled to vary the pitch blade to uh, capture optimally the wind and to best get that working. The nose, uh, again, just to say this again, would be able to be pushed in to uh, optimize the wind intake and be pushed against the casing to prevent any water leakage in the event of a flood. They're extremely practical and the technology could be installed extremely soon right down there beneath our feet. <laughs> now for the piezoelectric grass. It, it can carpet the walls and roof of a subway tunnel. Uh, it captures uh, a whole wind, no matter which angle it comes from, 
up, down, back, forth, just flexes it. Um, also, it doesn't matter if the gust is weak or strong. It works just as well. The, perhaps the best feature is that it's easy to install. Just stick it on the subway walls and do the wiring. In summary, this combination system will be extremely good for the environment, completely electric, no coal or fossil fuels. It would last for a long time. Like you said, no electrical parts or anything chewing it up. And regular wind farms, as well as being large, they kill many birds, as my partner said before, and uh, are harmful for the many animals that live in our planet. This would kill no animals, not even the rats that live down in the subway tunnels, though uh, some may not see that as a benefit. <laughs> uh, it reuses the energy wasted from the trains uh, down in the subway tunnels, collecting it from the heart of a city, heart of cities uh, that would otherwise have no easy to use uh, electricity um, uh, because most from the wind farms or from even many generators, they require the long power lines which you have energy leakage. Um, this is pollution free uh, electricity from the subways. It's um, around the world, from New York to Shanghai to Rio and Mumbai. Uh, and that's our smart system. Uh, thank you for listening to us. Uh, and thank We'd you, Mr. Again, Armstrong, like Mr. Fuji, and the Toshiba Foundation for your support. Can we, give, can we give them a big round of applause, please? Big round of applause. Stand up, stand up, guys. We'd also like to thank the, uh, the judges for choosing us as the regional winners in Explorer Vision. And I want, to say, I want to say on that note real quickly here, they are the regional winners. Uh, they are one of the regional winners. Now, there are six different regions that are in the Explorer Vision program. Overall, I want you to get a picture of how big this program really is. We're talking 13,000 plus students overall have participated this year in Explorer Vision. These regional winners, these young seventh graders, these young seventh graders beat out teams from about 10 other cities. So this is no small feat at all. I really want you to understand the significance and the value and the competition that this uh, um, Toshiba Explorer Vision really inspires kids to really do their best and shine. So we want to wish you guys big success going to, I uh, hope you guys get to the nationals and you guys do phenomenal success there. I love this idea. One quick question I have for you is, do you have any sense of the speed of the wind in the subway tunnel? Do you, how much speed, how fast can you capture? Well, we actually you... stuck an am anemometer out of the subway. People thought we were crazy. But <laughs> um, <laughs> we actually discovered that the wind outside, basically we put it, it was very close to the wall. It yeah. actually went at top speed on the Express 3 train. It went 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour? Yes. See, yeah, see, and that's, a, that's, and that's valuable, right? That's because now you can put that into your yeah. calculations of how much, how much energy you can really generate yeah. over a certain period of time. What, one of the advantages, because the reason it went 70 miles an hour, even though the train wasn't going 70 miles an hour, is the amount of wind, uh, all of the wind has to be compressed within the subway tunnel. That's why we especially at, um, like to use subways as an example and not normal trains. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you all, gentlemen, very much. One more time, round of applause. Your regional winners, okay? <laughs>